beautiful on the surface, but rotten underneath. Don't ever, even for a second, doubt that this is the most dangerous world in the galaxy. Danger does not always come in the shape of orcs with bolters, Ragnar. This world is where the elite of the Imperium have gathered. We are talking now of the most ruthless, ambitious, unscrupulous collection of rogues ever culled from a million planets. This is the place they have come to realize their ambitions, and on Terra they can, and will not let anything stand in their way. Not me, not you, not their own kin if need be. Terra, pronounced Tyr Uh, or in the most ancient records, Earth, is the throne world of the Imperium of Man and the original homeworld of mankind and of the God Emperor. It is the most sacred and revered place in all the million worlds that comprise the Imperium. Billions of human pilgrims from across the galaxy flock to Terra. Even the barren and contaminated soil that these pious folk now tread upon when they reach humanity's homeworld is considered sacred by the faithful of the Imperial Creed. Terra is effectively a globe-straddling temple dedicated to the worship of the Emperor of Mankind. The planet is home to the primary headquarters of many important adepta of the Imperium, since it serves as the capital world of the Emperor's realm. There is a great fear of space marines amongst the people who dwell there due to events dating back to the Horus Heresy, when much of the planet was leveled and terrorized by the actions of the traitor legions. None now remember Earth as it was in the ancient days. What scant records exist speak of a planet whose natural resources and beauty were quickly sacrificed upon the altar of progress. In the last days before the Age of Strife, it seems likely that old Earth hosted sprawling cities from pole to pole, polluted monuments to power, and human hubris. Then came war unlike anything humanity had ever known. What 41st millennium historians know of these conflicts, they have gleaned from nightmarish legends and gruesome myth, but it seems certain that weapons and armies were unleashed of such horrific power that they toppled the great cities of mankind. By the time the Emperor arose and began the process of reunifying the world that would be reborn and renamed as Terra, its people were little more than techno-barbarian savages warring for survival amidst the ruins of their former glories. The end of the Unification Wars changed everything. The devastation of the old was torn down and replaced with the magnificence of the nascent Imperium of Man. The Imperial Palace alone employed an entire mountain range, the Himalazias, as its foundation. Vast cityscapes covered continental land masses rich with statuary, parkland, soaring architecture and spaceports that stretched up into the outer atmosphere. Then came the Horus Heresy, and with it the brutish fortification of everything once beauteous about Imperial Terra. Devastation followed anew as the War Master Horus's hordes bombarded the throne world from space, and though they were at last driven off during the Siege of Terra, much that could never be replaced was lost and destroyed. Since that time Terra has been rebuilt again over the course of the 10,000 standard years of the Age of the Imperium, yet its magnificence becomes ever more faded, macabre and gothic. It is almost as though the throne world itself is bound to the emperor who rules it, and as his vitality fades so too does that of proud and ancient Terra. Today, in the 41st millennium, Terra is the slow-beating heart of the Imperium, a sacred world of power and majesty that has become legend for most of the people of the galaxy. It is the site of the Golden Throne the demesne of the divine emperor of mankind. The breathtaking architecture of its soaring buildings strike awe into the hearts of the millions of supplicants below. Forbidding statues of angels and primarchs loom down from their eyries, their sightless stare driving out all thoughts of heresy. It is considered such a blessing to set foot upon holy terra that most of the pilgrims who manage to reach its polluted surface never leave. Terra is perhaps the most massive hive world within the Imperium, 
with an uncounted population that numbers several hundred billion human beings. The bulk of Terra's massive population is divided between the upper class, that includes the imperial nobility and adepts of the Adeptus Terra, and the masses of the lower classes who serve as basic laborers. The upper class is comprised of the official servants of the emperor and his imperium, including imperial officials, ecclesiarchy clergy, the aristocratic families of the Nevis nobilite, military officers, scribes and bureaucrats. The teeming masses who comprise the Terran lower classes are far less privileged, and many of them are nothing more than serfs or thralls who toil in the throne world's countless manufactoria, providing the infrastructure that keeps the heart of the Imperium's Byzantine bureaucracy functioning. Terra has one moon Luna, which is an inhabited and highly populous civilized world of the Imperium in its own right. The Age of Terra, also called the Age of Progress, is the name given by Imperial scholars to the time from the dawn of mankind's civilization before the imperial calendar was instituted in the first millennium AD to the founding of the first truly united interstellar human civilization at some point in the 15th millennium. Cities such as Atlantis and Nova York are cited as being the most legendary and ancient cities of old earth in this time. Nations now known in the oldest and most incomplete fragments of imperial records, only as Germani, America, Britannia and Banya are said to have prospered, competed and wilted during this legendary time when humanity was slowly taking its first steps out towards the stars. For the next 10,000 standard years, during the era called the Dark Age of Technology in Imperial Chronologies, Terra served as the capital of mankind's first galactic civilization. This period was a golden age of scientific advancement when many technological wonders such as the Standard Template Construct STC databases and the Artificially Intelligent Men of Iron were brought into being. Humanity developed the warp drive and spread at an explosive pace across the galaxy, settling thousands of new colony worlds and making first contact with the other intelligent races of the galaxy including the Eldari and the Orcs. This period ended in violence and horror as the men of iron revolted against their human masters, and the first widespread appearance of human psychers caused the deaths of hundreds of millions of people when these men and women, unprepared to wield their new powers, unleashed the horrors of the warp upon their unsuspecting fellow citizens. The final nail in the coffin for the advanced human civilization of this period came when the gestation of the chaos god Slanesh in the Immaterium led to the onset of giant warp storms across the galaxy, completely disrupting interstellar travel and communications. Many human worlds now isolated from one another, regressed to a pre-industrial state, the glories of their past lost to myth, legend and small stockpiles of archaeotech. Terra itself was consumed by terrible civil wars between nations of techno-barbarians that began in the 27th millennium and resulted in the use of biological, chemical and thermonuclear weapons of mass destruction that killed billions and forever scarred the sacred landscape of mankind's homeworld. Only with the end of the Age of Strife in the 30th millennium following the birth of Slanesh and the fall of the Eldar, was sanity restored to the people of Terra, when the Emperor of Mankind first rose from deliberate obscurity to launch the unification wars that would unite all the nations of Terra beneath his rule, and formally establish the Imperium of Man. After forging an alliance with the Cult Mechanicus of Mars to allow the Tech priests to maintain their autonomy and religious freedom in return for providing the newborn Imperium with the starships, material and war machines it would need to reunite humanity under the emperor's rule. The master of mankind unleashed the great crusade upon the galaxy. As the imperial expeditionary fleets loaded with space marines, imperial army troops and mechanicus titans once more brought mankind under a single rule defined by the secular imperial truth in the early 31st millennium, 
the current age of the Imperium finally dawned, the Emperor's dream of a new golden age of reason and progress for mankind collapsed in the wake of the galaxy-wide Imperial Civil War, known as the Horus Heresy. The War Master Horus, Primarch of the Sons of Horus Legion and leader of the Great Crusade after the Emperor retired to Terra, was corrupted by the ruinous powers of chaos and rebelled against his father. Fully half of the Space Marine Legions, the Imperial Army and the Ancient Mechanicum threw in their lot with Horus and the other traitors, and for nine standard years they waged a brutal and total war upon the galaxy, leaving countless worlds blazing in thermonuclear fire as they closed in on Terra. During the Siege of Terra, the traitor legions laid siege to the Imperial Palace itself, and billions of Terrans died in loyal defense of their emperor. Hundreds of millions of Terran civilians who became trapped behind the lines of the forces of chaos after their landing suffered horribly at the hands of the servants of the Dark Gods. So great was their suffering that a morbid fear of space marines became a permanent fixture of Terran culture ever afterwards. But the Emperor and his loyalist servants ultimately prevailed, and slew Horus at the height of his power on the bridge of his own flagship, the terrible Gloriana-class battleship, Vengeful Spirit, in high Terran orbit. But the price was high for the Emperor was mortally wounded and only survived by having his ravaged body interred within the cybernetic life support mechanisms of the arcane device known as the Golden Throne. Though the Emperor's mind remained fully empowered and active within the Immaterium, he could no longer directly communicate his wishes to those who remained behind to govern his Imperium. And so for the last 10,000 Terran years stagnation, technologically, culturally, and even morally, has come to define the Imperium of Man. The Imperial Truth's official atheism has wilted in the face of the terrible dangers that confront mankind in the Milky Way galaxy, replaced by the comfort of a religion that holds that the Emperor of Mankind is the God incarnate of humanity. Terra has become the heart of an interstellar Imperium, stretching across tens of thousands of light years and encompassing more than one million inhabited worlds, though it does so through the administration of a galactic government that is, at best, an uncaring, faceless bureaucracy, and at worst, a brutal, xenophobic, and narrow-minded tyranny. Hundreds of billions of people now call the sacred soil of Terra home, but they are packed into the human warrens known as hive cities, which are islands of tortured civilization in a vast, toxic urban landscape that stretches across the entire world. The lucky are able to find work within the bureaucracy of the Imperial Administratum, while the majority are condemned to the poverty and heartbreak of lives as common manufactorum laborers or serfs. In the late 41st millennium, there is no doubt that Terra will become the scene of mankind's ultimate salvation at the hands of the Emperor's loyal servants, or the last outpost of humanity to fall before a tide of heretical rebellion, Xenos genocide and chaos damnation. Next to nothing is known about Terra's early millennia during the so-called Age of Terra, save that it was between the 1st and 15th millennia AD that mankind made their first forays into space, notably colonizing Mars. Warp travel was at this point was technologically impossible meaning most space colonies were self-sufficient and isolated by long, dangerous, sub-light speed journeys. Likewise, not much is known about the age of technology and age of strife that followed, or why Terra was spared the annihilation that met countless other human-settled worlds. It was at this time that Terra and Mars made ancient agreements that would tie the fates of both planets forever, with Mars at this time a hub of manufacture, scientific research and commerce. Towards the end of the Age of Strife, several thousand standard years during which the first galaxy-spanning empire of humanity crumbled and fractured into isolated fragments, the Emperor of Mankind first revealed himself to humanity. He began reconquering Terra with an army of Thunder Warriors during the so-called Unification Wars, 
which were the genetically modified super soldiers who preceded the space marines. The various techno-barbarian empires on Terra were destroyed with this unstoppable army, and the Emperor soon controlled the whole planet, with designs on taking back the entire galaxy. The Great Crusade launched from Terra, which itself became a key battlefield of the Horus Heresy, with the final climactic conflict seeing the planet invaded in mass by the followers of the War Master Horus during the Siege of Terra. With the Emperor incapacitated during the Horus Heresy, leadership over the Imperium fell to the High Lords of Terra. This did not always go smoothly, such as in the mid-32 in Millennium, when the High Lords were slain by the Grand Master of Assassins, Draken Vangarich, in an event called the Beheading, who then ruled the Imperium for solar decades before being deposed by a combined strike force of Space Marines. The Imperium was once split in twain by political strife during the so-called Nova Terra Interregnum, when the Ur Council of Nova Terra established a second, parallel capital to the Imperium. The Nova Terra Interregnum ended, only to be followed by a new schism. Ecclesiarch Goga von Deer struggled for power with the other High Lords of Terra. As tensions escalated, Several chapters of Space Marines assaulted Terra in order to remove the tyrant from office. Van Deer was eventually betrayed by the holy military order that would become the Sisters of Battle. With the opening of the Cicatrix Maledictum following the fall of Cadia in the 13th Black Crusade, the beacon of the Astronomicon faltered, and Terra itself was assailed by demons as Korn launched a brutal assault on the Imperial Palace known as the Battle of Lion's Gate, a joint force of Primaris Space Marines, Adeptus Custodes and Sisters of Silence repelled the assault, but it stands as a dire warning of just how far the Chaos Gods could reach if the Golden Throne were to fail completely. Terra in the 41st millennium is an imperial hive world, the largest in the galaxy. The Earth was stripped of all forms of natural resources many millennia ago. Its soil is utterly barren, and its atmosphere is now a fog of industrial pollution. Massive labyrinthine edifices of state sprawl across the vast majority of the surface. What remained of Terra's oceans after the thermonuclear wars that scarred the planet during the Age of Strife boiled away in the years after the Horus Heresy due to the immense heat produced by the hundreds of billions of people who have been compressed into the world's limited living space. All liquid water to meet the Terran population's needs is now delivered from orbit by freighters who take large ice-bearing comets from the outer Sol system and bring them into Terran orbit to be melted down and dispersed to the population. Many mountain ranges have been leveled, perhaps all but the Himalayan range, the Himalayas which remain untouched due to the genetic engineering laboratory said to lie beneath them, where the Emperor created the Primarchs and the first Space Marines after the Unification Wars more than ten millennia ago. The chambers of the Astronomican also course throughout the whole mountain range. Despite being devastated during the Horus Heresy, and by the terrible wars fought across the surface of the world by the nations of techno-barbarians during the Long Age of Strife, Terra is still the most vastly populated and built-up hive world in the Imperium. Beneath countless layers and millennia of urban accretion, catacombs hold older cultures radically different from the surface ones. Much of the population of Terra exists in the most terrible squalor, their greatest hope that one of their offspring might be accepted into the Adeptus Terra, the priesthood of Earth and bureaucracy of the Imperium, as a menial, an adept of the lowliest sort. A square meter of land on Terra costs more than a palace on any other hive world. Only the most wealthy citizens can afford to own a small section of land. Terra's entire surface, with the exception of the Antarctic region, is covered in labyrinthine edifices of state, including the Imperial Palace, the Ecclesiarchal Palace of the Adeptus Ministorum, and the many departmental headquarters of the Adeptus Terra, the imperial government. The headquarters of the Imperial Inquisition on Terra, 
lies beneath the ice caps of the southern polar region of Antarctica, and is one of the most secure installations in the entire Imperium. Terra was also originally home to the massive concentrations of industry known as orbital plates, which in earlier times were referred to as space elevators. By the time of the Great Crusade in the 30th millennium, most made use of anti-gravitic technology and no longer had any need to be anchored to the planet's surface. These orbiting cities were old, even in the time of the Unification Wars, but during the Horus Heresy, in the years before the start of the Siege of Terra, the Primarch Robel Dorn, who had been named Praetorian of Terra by the Emperor, and was thus in charge of its defense from Horus's invasion, had them all dismantled, moved, or abandoned over questions concerning their safety and loyalty. In the 41st millennium there are still countless orbital defense platforms circling Terra, and the throne world is the most heavily fortified and protected planet in the galaxy. By the time of the Unification Wars in the early 30th millennium, there was only one remaining ocean on Terra, the so-called Great Ocean, which was actually the remains of the ancient Pacific Ocean. The size of the Pacific was vastly smaller than in prior eras, due to the vaporization of a massive stretch of the ocean during the nuclear wars that had consumed much of old Earth in the lost years of the Age of Strife. This missing portion of the Pacific stretched from the Marianas Trench down past Australia and all the way to the frozen continent of Antarctica. The Atlantic Ocean had also been largely vaporized as the great body of water that had once been near Europe was now mostly gone particularly to the south of what had been the Iberian Peninsula. Other, smaller bodies of water may still have remained during this time, as a great sea is recorded to have been present in the region of Eurasia, where the Caspian Sea had lain in ages past. These bodies of water still existed at the start of the Horus Heresy in the early 31st millennium, but by the time of the 41st millennium, Terra had no free-standing bodies of water having become a true ecumenopolis, a world completely covered by the dense urban areas of massive hive cities. The emperor had sought to create artificial bodies of water to replace what had been lost in the wake of the unification wars, but by the 41st millennium, no liquid water was visible on Terra's surface. Within these human hives toiled the tens of billions of Adeptus Terra bureaucrats and serfs, required to keep the decaying heart of the Imperium of Man pumping. Terra is the heart and throne world of the Imperium of Man, and serves as the headquarters for many of its most important adepta and other organizations. Most importantly, it is the home world and resting place of the Emperor of Mankind, the most important places on Terra and the headquarters of the vital Imperial organizations based on Terra include the following. Imperial Palace, one of the largest structures on Terra, the Imperial Palace is more like a sprawling hive city than a single edifice. It covers the better part of the Northern Hemisphere, and is guarded by the Adeptus Custodes, the superhuman Praetorians of the Emperor who rarely leave the confines of the palace. It is the heart of the Administratum, as well as the home of the Sanctum Imperialis, the great throne room of the emperor and the location of the golden throne. The palace is divided between the inner and outer palace. It is described as an endless black hive of forbidden technology and subterranean passages, delving deep within the bowels of the planet. Eternity Gate, the largest entryway into the inner imperial palace's Sanctum Imperialis. A mile-long passage leads to the Eternity Gate, lined with the banners of thousands of the greatest and long-dead Imperial heroes, including Lord Commander Solar Macorius. It constitutes the end of the Galactic Pilgrimage Trail, or the devotees of the Imperial Cult, and is itself the most important pilgrimage site in the entire Imperium for almost no one is ever allowed entrance through the Eternity Gate into the Sanctum Imperialis. Sanctum Imperialis The Sanctum Imperialis is the throne room and heart of the Imperial Palace,
It is the massive chamber housing the Golden Throne and the Emperor's physical body. It is guarded by a select group of 300 Adeptus Custodes, the Companions, who are the elite among the elite, central offices of the Departmento Munitorum. These offices mark the central location of the Departmento Munitorum, a department or subdivision of the Adeptus Administratum devoted to the general administration, personnel assignment, supply and logistics of the Astra Militarum, House of Weapons. The House of Weapons is the ancient, formidable armory of the Imperial Palace. The Adeptus Custodes and the Imperial Fist Chapter are known to store their arms and armor here. Tower of Hegemon. This tower is where the Custodes keep their office of watch. Within the tower lies the Watch Room, the nerve center for security operations for the Adeptus Custodes and the entire Imperial Palace complex. City of Sight. The City of Sight was built within a section of the Emperor's own Imperial Palace in the Himalayan, Himalayan Mountains. This was the main headquarters of the Adeptus Astra Telepathica during the Great Crusade and the opening days of the Horus Heresy. Obsidian Keep The Obsidian Keep is the current headquarters of the Adeptus Astra Telepathica in the 41st millennium. Located in the vast Astra Telepathica Palace complex on Terra, some psychers captured by the League of Black Ships are brought here for training as astropaths or sanctioned psychers. Bob Bastion. The Bob Bastion was an ancient place of counsel and refuge for warlords and tyrants since before the Age of Strife. Following the Unification Wars, this ancient structure was absorbed into the growing complex of the Imperial Palace. During the Horus Heresy, the Bob Bastion, alongside the Phalanx, the massive capital ship of the Imperial Fists chapter, acted as the command center of the Primarch Robel Dorn, while he oversaw the construction of the defenses for the Sol system as the War Master Horus's traitor legions closed on the throne world. Tower of Heroes The Tower of Heroes houses the Bell of Lost Souls, a colossal iron bell that is as massive as a building and adorned with dark runes. The bell of lost souls tolls only when the greatest of the Imperium of Man's heroes perish and can be heard by millions of people across the face of Terra. It rarely rings but, when it does, all resident Imperial Palace servants must be evacuated and sealed within reinforced shelters to prevent the annihilation of their eardrums and subsequent death through lung rupture and embolism. Among its many legends is the holiest of all, that when the bell rings, the emperor hears the sound even in his long slumber upon the golden throne and sheds a single tear. The Shrouds The Shrouds is the name given to the secret chamber located deep within the confines of the inner palace that served as the headquarters of the Officio Assassinorum. It was the primary meeting place of the various masters of all six assassin clades and was overseen by the Grand Master of Assassins. During the Great Crusade and Horus Heresy eras, this post was held by Malkador the Sigilite. Column of Glory The Column of Glory is a massive crystalline pillar of multi-hued metals rising half a kilometer high under a vaulted dome so lofty that clouds form to obscure its frescoed arcs. Studying the column is hundreds of shattered suits of power armor belonging to Blood Angels, White Scars and Imperial Fists Space Marines, who died defending the Imperial Palace 10,000 standard years ago during the Siege of Terra. The Pillar of Bone The Pillar of Bone is believed to be a monument raised on Terra to the Imperial Fist's courage in an unnamed campaign. In reality, it is actually a sacred relic to those privy to the truth about the chapter within the Imperial Fists. The pillar is the last remnant of the once great Imperial Fists fortress monastery that stood on Terra. It was destroyed during the Horus Heresy in the midst of the Siege of Terra. The Investiary the Investiary was a massive amphitheater open to the night sky, its broad space once containing the statues of the twenty Primarchs on Auslite plinths in a silent ring.
the effigies of the traitorous primarchs who betrayed the emperor during the Horus heresy were once temporarily shrouded. Following the end of the Horus heresy, the effigies of the traitor primarchs were removed entirely. The Senatorum Imperialis of the High Lords of Terra, this immense building within the Imperial Palace complex houses, the Council or Senatorum Imperialis of the twelve highest-ranking political officials in the Imperium, the High Lords of Terra, who rule in the Emperor's name as he no longer can, though his mind is believed to remain active in the warp, guiding and protecting humanity. Great Chamber of the Senatorum Imperialis this massive meeting chamber is where the imperial elite hold their parliament and is the meeting place of the High Twelve. Library Sanctus The Library Sanctus is an imperial archive located on Terra. It holds knowledge of some of the oldest and most sinister things in galactic history, such as information on the Men of Iron and the Imga Monolith, Dark Cells, the Dark Cells or Black Cells as they are sometimes called, are shadowy obliettes located deep beneath the Imperial Palace that contain entities and artifacts that date back to the Age of Strife that could be used to annihilate the Imperium itself if they were to break free or be used by those with nefarious purposes. It is unknown if the Dark Cells are the same location as the Vaults of Rython that were used for an identical purpose by the Legio Custodes before the Horus Heresy. Guarded by the shield host of the Adeptus Custodes known as the Shadow Keepers, the technology used to keep them sealed includes runic locks, psychic wards and sanctic circles. The corridors of the Dark Cells are patrolled at all times by a hundred custodians of the Shadow Keepers. Although neither light nor sound can escape from the cells, the dread air surrounding the facility is capable of even putting the iron-willed custodians on edge. Adeptus Terra The Adeptus Terra, known commonly as the Priesthood of Earth, is the actual government of the Imperium of Man consisting of countless different bureaucratic organizations and the departments within them. Besides the vast, destitute population of non-adepts that makes up the majority of the planet's populace, much of the rest of Terra's population are members of the Adeptus Terra, and of these the largest percentage are adepts of the Administratum. Administratum The Administratum is the administrative and primary bureaucratic division of the Adeptus Terra. It consists of untold billions of clerks, scribes, bureaucrats and administrative staff constantly working to manage the Imperium at every level, from assembling war fleets to levying taxes and tithes. It is the largest of the departments comprising the Adeptus Terra, and 10 billion Administratum Adepts work in the Imperial Palace alone. The Forbidden Fortress the Forbidden Fortress is a vast complex that extends throughout the mountain range of the Himalayas. A single peak is carved to form the Chamber of the Astronomican, where 10,000 psychers continuously power the Astronomican beacon directed by the mind of the Emperor with their own life energies. The psychic light of the beacon reaches thousands of light years across the warp, and helps to keep the demonic entities of the warp from breaking through the dimensional barrier into real space. The Astronomican is utilized by the mutant psychers known as navigators to guide interstellar starships through the otherwise trackless chaos of the warp. Without it, long-distance warp travel would be impossible, and the Imperium of Man would disintegrate. Access to the Forbidden Fortress is restricted to invitation only. This includes even members of the Inquisition who must still request access. Fortress of the Inquisition The Inquisition's headquarters on Terra is a sprawling and highly secure complex built beneath the south polar ice cap of Antarctica. Located deep underground, this subterranean complex is heavily warded and equipped with psyker dampening devices and null fields. Only members of the Inquisition and a sparse number of prisoners are permitted to enter this underground complex. The fortress is overseen by a senior inquisitor known as the Castellan, 
a position which changes annually, to ensure that no man or woman can establish a political power base or extend the control of one of the Inquisition's innumerable quarreling factions over this facility. Navigator's Quarter, the headquarters of the families of the Navis Nobili, the Navigators, it is said to be located on a massive island. Hall of Judgment, the headquarters of the Adeptus Arbites, the chief law enforcement organization of the Imperium, Officio Assassinorum and the Assassinorum Temple. Although its agents operate throughout the Imperium, this dark organization is based on Terra, its school of assassins and most of the temples that comprise the Officio are said to be located on Terra, although their actual locations are closely guarded secrets. The Assassinorum Temple is specifically the headquarters of the Grand Master of Assassins, Adeptus Astra, Telepathica, the Adeptus Astra. Telepathica is the organization responsible for recruiting and training officially sanctioned psychers for service to the Imperium. The infamous black ships of the Adeptus Astra Telepathica travel throughout the Imperium, gathering their tithe of psychers and returning with them to Terra. The psychers are analyzed and sorted according to their psychic power and strength of mind in resisting the temptations of chaos. The novitiates are trained at the Scholastica Psychana for five standard years before being set for further training elsewhere. Some of these sanctioned psychers become astropaths, specialist psychers who are trained to telepathically send and receive messages over interstellar distances. No other form of instantaneous interstellar communication exists. Others are requisitioned by the Adeptus Astronomica for service in the Astronomicans' choir. The most powerful, those who demonstrate a strong enough mental character to resist demonic possession on their own, often enter the Inquisition for training as acolytes, with some eventually becoming Inquisitors themselves. Those psychers deemed too weak or dangerous to live become sacrifices to the Emperor. Their souls are fed into the arcane technology of the Golden Throne so that the Emperor may continue to live and guide the Astronomicon that allows the Imperium to function as an interstellar civilization. Only psychers that have been trained at the Scholastia Psychana are legally sanctioned by the Imperium. All others are considered illegal, often branded as witches, and are at risk of being summarily executed as heretics, by the Inquisition's Ordo Hereticus and other organs of official imperial power. The Ecclesiarchal Palace, the headquarters of the Ecclesiarchy, also known as the Adeptus Ministorum, the Ecclesiarchal Palace sprawls over almost the entirety of Terra's southern continent of Australia. It is also home to one of the two major convent fortresses, the Convent Prioris, of the Adeptus Sororitas, the Sisters of Battle, on the Imperium's throne world, the Cathedral of the Emperor Deified, a massive cathedral of the Imperial cult that was built near the Ecclesiarchal Palace, the Cathedral of the Savior Emperor, a large cathedral of the Imperial cult that is quite popular amongst pilgrims. It is said to contain important Imperial relics, including pieces of the Emperor's armor and ashes from the cloak of Robut Guilliman the Primarch of the Ultramarines and current Lord Commander of the Imperium. Pilgrims often undertake multi-year journeys to the cathedral and endure massive lines, only to be granted a mere three solar seconds to be in the presence of these holy relics before they must take their leave and move on. Kungba Marwu, Kungba Marwu, also known as the Vault, was a large underground imperial prison complex on Terra, intended to hold the worst criminals of the Imperium of Man. Its inmates were overseen by the Legio Custodes during the early 31st millennium. The prison was located in the Himalayan mountains under the mountain peak of Rakaposhi, and had been constructed at least a thousand standard years before the Horus heresy began by persons unknown. The prison was home to some of the worst criminals of the Imperium and had been used to imprison several of the tyrants defeated by the Emperor's forces during the Unification Wars. Eternal City The Eternal City is a massive urban area 
adjacent to the walls of the imperial palace in the 41st millennium that is known to contain both great splendor and horrible squalor, making it a microcosm of Terra itself. The Catacombs The Catacombs are vast underground passages which run beneath Terra, so large that they require oversight by a designated imperial official known as the Mistress Plenary, who is a lesser member of the Senatorum Imperialis, serving at the pleasure of the High Lords. Hive Karelia. This ancient city once housed a vast library that contained knowledge of the Dark Age of Technology, but was bombed by pro-pan pacifists during the Great Crusade era due to civil unrest and resistance to the Emperor's rule. It had been scheduled for demolition, but Kaspar Ansbach Halzer, an imperial conservator, historian, managed to succeed in recovering over 7,000 texts from a data archive that had been deemed worthless. Hive Tashkent Hive Tashkent is one of the hive cities of Terra, known to exist in the 32nd millennium at the time of the War of the Beast. It is based on the continent of Asia, Himalayic Shelf. Deep beneath this geological construction live the deadly denizens of various rune-locked vaults. The warriors of the Adeptus Custodes often fight in skirmishes intended to prevent them from escaping. Manufactor Americum Beneath this massive manufactorum complex lie countless tunnels that are used as hiding places for various cults. The warriors of the Adeptus Custodes sometimes enter them to carry out a purge of the cultists when the threat they present begins to grow. Walking City The Walking City was a densely populated mobile techno-nomad platform that slowly walked a looping route towards the equator of Terra and back on twenty great legs. During the Horus Heresy, in the days just before the start of the Siege of Terra, the Walking City came under assault by the demon known as the Lord of Flies, which had used the potent faith of a secret church dedicated to the then-illegal cult of the God-Emperor as a way to manifest in the material realm. The demon had infected the population, transforming them into plague-fly-riddled zombies. The Knights Errant, led by Nathaniel Garrow, were dispatched to combat the attack and successfully banished the chaos infestation. White Mountain The White Mountain was a great subterranean fortress delved beneath a mountain range on Terra. It had been constructed by one of Terra's ancient and unknown warlords and lay in a region that, by the time of the Horus, heresy was still irradiated and lifeless from the damage caused to the world by the Age of Strife. The fortress had been taken over by the Imperium, and had potent anti-psyker wards put in place so that it could serve as a prison for psychers. The Emperor's intent had been to imprison the potent psychic Primarch Magnus the Red there, if he had been successfully extracted from Prospero. Unfortunately, the Space Wolves had attacked that world early in the heresy against the Emperor's original orders, and Magnus had gone over to the service of Chaos, never returning to Terra. The White Mountain was where Malkador the Sigilite ordered a group of Sisters of Silence who had been captured and tortured by the forces of Chaos, and then recovered by the Loyalists to be held while his researchers sought to determine what had been done to them. In fact, the Altered Sisters were simply part of a plot by the traitors to assassinate the Sigilite by triggering a subliminal mental command that had been psychically embedded in the mind of Tylos Rubio by the word bearers, first chaplain Erebus. Rubio was one of Malkador's knights errant who had fought at the Battle of Kalf. The plot was initiated when the White Mountain came under assault by Chaos Cultus and the demon of Nurgle known as the Lord of Flies. The knights errant were deployed onto the slopes of the fortress to deal with the assault, while Rubio's mental conditioning was triggered by the Sisters of Silence kept within the White Mountain's holding cells. He attacked Malkador while the Sigilite was bereft of his psychic powers due to the fortress's anti-psyker technology. The Sigilite managed to hold off the attack using his hidden conversion field, and then psychically stripped the mental conditioning from Rubio's mind. On the slopes of the White Mountain, Garrow and the Knights Errant managed to defeat the Chaos Assault, 
though the knight errant and former world eater, Macer Varen was possessed by the Lord of Flies, before finding the willpower to force back the demon's assault and destroy himself using a brace of grenades taken from Garvio Loken. The demon's hold on real space was finally destroyed by the Sigilite himself, who used his restored psychic abilities to burn the demon to ash. As the throne world of the Imperium, Terra is the most heavily defended world in the galaxy, as Terra itself had faced few true threats in the 10,000 years since the end of the Horus Heresy, even the idea of attacking the planet has been seen as ridiculous by many Imperial officials throughout history. However, the world has always been protected by a multitude of layered defenses drawn from every branch of the Imperial military. These include, but are not limited to, the following. Battlefleet Solar the Battlefleet Solar of the Imperial Navy includes not only the largest number of capital ships the Imperium possesses in one fleet, but a vast array of star forts of many different types. The Phalanx, the mobile fortress monastery of the Imperial Fists. Chapter normally takes up station in high orbit over Terra. Astra Militarum, multiple Imperial Guard regiments garrison Terra, including the Palatine Sentinels, Lucifer Blacks, Katanda Stalwarts, and Terran prefects, convent prioris of the Adepta Sororitas, Adeptus Custodes, Sisters of Silence. Since the resurrection of Robut Gilliman and his return to the position of Lord Commander of the Imperium, he has sought to restore the Sisters of Silence to their ancient place of prominence as defenders of the throne world. Legio Ignatum Titan Legion, Knights of House Tyrannus. The Imperial Knights of House Tyrannus of Mars are always available to lend their aid to the defense of Terra. Ordo Sinister, Adeptus Arbites, Ordo Custodum of the Inquisition. The Ordo Custodum is a minor Ordo of the Inquisition. Founded in the 35th millennium, it currently consists of under 50 Inquisitors. They keep a vigilant watch on Terra. The Ordo Hereticus, also maintains a large presence on the planet. Inquisitorial Stormtroopers. Officio Assassinorum. A small detachment of Space Wolves. Imperial Fists. Chapter. The Imperial Fists garrison Terra as a full until the War of the Beast in the mid-32 and millennium when they moved off-world to become a fleet-based chapter but elements of the chapter return to defend the planet on a semi-permanent basis in the aftermath of the 13th Black Crusade in 999. M. 41. Crusader Host, 3031 St. Millennium. The Crusader Host was a group of Space Marines drawn from all 18 Space Marine legions based within the Sol system during the Great Crusade. Their exact purpose is unknown. When news of the Horus heresy reached Terra, Robel Dorn had all members of the host imprisoned in Kangba Marwu, fearing for their loyalty, save for the Imperial Fist members. Some time later, several of these Astartes chose to escape. This small group became known as the Outcast Dead. Frateris Templar, 32 and 36 Thief Millennia. The Frateris Templar was the military order of the Adeptus Ministorum until it was disbanded and replaced by the Orders Militant of the Adeptus Sororitas in the 36th millennium after the Age of Apostasy. In the centuries between the 32nd and 36th millennia, when the political power of the Ecclesiarchy was at its height and largely ruled the Imperium, the Frateris Templar provided a significant force to defend the sacred throne world from humanity's enemies. Terra is the resting place of the immortal Emperor of Mankind, where he has sat on the life-preserving cybernetic golden throne, neither alive nor truly dead, for 10,000 years. He and the Imperial Palace are guarded by the elite Adeptus Custodes. Among them is a select inner core of 300 who never leave his side, known as the Companions. The Astronomicon is a psychic navigational beacon located on Terra, and is a vital navigation aid to the mutant navigators of the Navy Nobility, who pilot the Imperium's chimerical and military starships through the chaotic eddies of the warp. 
Without its telepathic guidance, faster-than-light travel through the warp at distances of more than a few light years at a time would be next to impossible, and the Imperium of Man would collapse economically, militarily, and politically. Luna, the moon, has also been colonized and is home to immense planetary defense lasers charged with protecting Terra from invasion. These defenses inflicted savage losses on the invading traitor legion fleets of the War Master Horus during the latter stages of the Horus Heresy. Luna served as the greatest shipyard and naval base in the Imperium of Man at the time of the Great Crusade and the Horus Heresy. Luna also gives its name to a common class of Imperial Navy cruiser, the Luna class. Billions of Imperial cult pilgrims flock to the planet every day, eager for a glimpse of the Imperial Palace or one of the untold number of gargantuan Imperial cathedrals of the Ecclesiarchy. In spite of the fact that millions of pilgrims are accepted daily, many more are kept waiting. Such is the scale of the Imperium of Man in the 41st millennium, that many of these pilgrims' journeys were started by their ancestors, and only centuries later would a member of the family actually complete their long pilgrimage to Terra. Many will set out hopeful and never come close to their goal. Those who make it are said to never return crushed to death by their fellow pilgrims, executed by the Adeptus Arbites for straying into restricted areas, or perhaps killed by the crazed and destitute Hive City citizens, violent gangers, etc. The name Terra originates from the ancient Terran language known as Latin which translates as Earth, Land. It is the name of Earth in many modern-day Romance languages descended from Latin,